anyway, on the way to this meetup, I figured I would do my TDD weekly report. And I've got three subjects this week. First off, there's an email going around called Keep Him Walking, and it shows a helicopter painted with, uh, well, not painted to be, to look like an eagle. And they say it's an MI-24 helicopter that our soldiers use in Afghanistan. Well, I can tell you for a fact, our military does not fly MI-24 helicopters. That's a Russian Hind helicopter. And also, when I first looked on it, I didn't see anything that looked like any of our kind of military markings. So I did a little further investigation. I'll put pictures up as I'm talking about this. And this is a helicopter owned by the Hungarian Air Force and they fly it in air shows. It's not used for military purposes. It's more or less a demonstration bird for air shows, but it's a very beautiful paint scheme. Whoever did it took a lot of time to uh, make it look super cool. So it's a great helicopter, but yeah, it's not, uh, as the email purports, it's not an Afghanistan warbird owned by our side. As of yet, we haven't um, had a bad enough economy to have to be buying our helicopters from Russia or somewhere else. So that's the name of that tune. Next up, I want to talk about, and this is probably going to be controversial, but that's okay. Uh, talk about Obama's Nobel Peace Prize. Now, I was hoping that maybe he would be statesman enough to not accept it because, I mean... Let's face it, I mean, you're supposed to get a prize for something you've actually accomplished. And there's even precedent for that. Some of you that are listening to this are probably too young to remember, but in 1973, Henry Kissinger accepted a Nobel Peace Prize for supposedly negotiating a peace treaty in between North Vietnam and South Vietnam. Yeah, my lips are so cold I can't talk. Between North Vietnam and South Vietnam. Well it was actually jointly awarded between him and a, Viet a North Vietnamese general that were both the negotiators for the peace treaty that actually never ended up in peace and uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right but the general's name was Lee I believe it was Lee Duc Tho or Le Duc Tho he actually believe it or not, declined the Nobel Peace Prize because of the fact he said we didn't actually accomplish peace with the negotiation. It didn't actually uh, accomplish anything and he wasn't going to accept a prize for something he didn't actually accomplish, although Henry Kissinger was more than willing to accept the prize. So I was kind of hoping Obama would be statesman enough to say, wait a minute, you know, if you're going to give me some kind of Nobel Peace Prize, wait till I at least accomplish something to deserve it but I mean I guess that's just your uh, typical politician rather than a statesman and uh, I'm not an Obama hater either I mean just in case people would think I'm an Obama hater or something like that I uh, wish him well because uh, if he fails our country fails and I'm actually hoping he can fix the health care situation and get us something that works even even a little I'd be happy for even a little bit better than what we have right now so I just think it would have been a better idea for him to uh, turn the peace prize down and then accept it when you actually accomplish something that's kind of been a problem in the Chicago school system the last 10 years it's like we're so worried about the students self-esteem that we award prizes for just about no effort in any way so we end up having kids with uh, very high self-esteem but haven't accomplished much of anything. And then when we do have a student that accomplishes a lot, we have to tone it down because the other students might feel kind of bad about it. You know, it might hurt their feelings if uh, one of the particular students excels at something and then gets all the awards and the prizes for doing it. You know, we don't want to hurt the feelings of the kids that didn't accomplish anything. But that's my two cents about that. And finally, my movie review of Zombieland now. I watched Almighty Vlog's review of it, and I also, on my last Dumpster Diver, posted the amazing 
atheist review of it. Now, Almighty Vlog didn't care for it at all. The Amazing Atheist thought it was a fantastic zombie movie. I'm kind of uh, middle of the road on it. It's probably out of the three spoof zombie type of films I like, it's probably the, the middle one, number two, uh, ahead of Shaun of the Dead, but nowhere near as good as if you want to see a good zombie spoof movie, watch Return of the Living Dead. I'd give it, now I, I'm somebody that'll watch a zombie movie even if it's not that good, so if you're looking at it from that position and you really are into the zombie movies, I'd call it three out of five stars. Uh, watch it if it's if you can get the bargain matinee to it. A better cost, go watch it. Otherwise, if you got to pay full price, I'd say wait till it comes out on DVD and watch it that way. But Zombieland, some things that it was kind of lacking, and after watching the Amazing Atheist review, I kind of expected it was going to take zombie killing to a new level as far as the amount of it and new and different exciting ways to uh, kill zombies, but. <laughs> It never even came close to that. I mean, it's not like you're going to watch it and not see zombie killing. There is, you know, it's a zombie movie, so there is going to be that. But it does not push the cutting edge. And also, in the middle of the movie, after the cameo, I won't tell you about the cameo, but that is a really good highlight of the movie. After the cameo, the movie kind of really slows down for some character development. And in the movie... I'd say half of the character development, especially when it comes to Woody Harrelson's character, is not really necessary. I mean, he's enough of a stereotypical character in the movie, and his acting is superb. I mean, there is nothing about Woody Harrelson's acting in the movie that I would even criticize. It is top-notch, but some of the background character development for his character, it wasn't really necessary, and you could have left it out, and the movie would have been just as good and replaced it with about an extra 15 minutes of uh, creative new ways to kill zombies and it would have made the movie even better. But it does too, it, it has a redeeming value right after the slow part, it picks up again and the last 15 minutes of the movie are really good. So it, it does have a, a good solid ending for a zombie movie. So, and let's see, what was the other thing? Two things, character development, zombie, maybe, the, well that's all I can think of right now, but Basically, if you're somebody that loves zombie movies, check it out if you can get a bargain matinee ticket. If not, wait for it to come out on DVD. So That's about it for this week's TDD report. I will catch you guys next week.